I would say what we see as marketed as a artificial intelligence today is definitively not what I just described. Most artificial intelligence out there actually is artificial artificial intelligence in a way. If we have a problem, we want that problem solved really fast. We've been trained as consumers to really expect more. Hi everyone, my name is Ruth. I am on the marketing team here at Forethought. And before, I'm so excited to have everyone here together for today's webinar. Um, before we get started though, I wanna give Zia and Lindsay the opportunity to introduce themselves, tell us a little bit about what they do here at Forethought, then we can get started. Uh, Zia, do you wanna go first? Yeah, sure. Hey everyone, it's a pleasure to be here today. My name is Zia Syed. I lead one of our sales engineering teams here at Forethought. I've been with Forethought for a bit over a year now. Previously, I worked at Cisco Systems as a sales engineer for over five years, overlaying you know kind of their web-based accounts and their innovation team. So after working in that monolithic networking space for a long time, I decided it was time to hop over to this buzzword sounding artificial intelligence space. And that's exactly why I'm here. Nice. Lindsay? Yeah, so hi everyone. My name is Lindsay Fifield. I'm an Enterprise Customer Success Manager on the CX team here at Forethought. I help manage our customers' implementations and onboarding, as well as their post-implementation AI success plans. I come from a SaaS and services background, having over a decade consulting experience, working um, with lots of different organizations, with various digital transformation projects. And yeah, I've been at Forethought a little under a year, primarily focused now in this AI transformation space. So super excited to be here. Thanks for having me, Ruth and Zia. Awesome. I'm so excited. So we've put together this webinar to discuss how customer organizations can prepare themselves for AI. As customer support has evolved over the years, we've come to see that we just expect more. Customers expect more out of the out of the companies that they buy goods and services from. If we have questions about a product, we want to be able to find the information that we want or need right when we need it. With everyone being online more than ever these days, they just expect to be able to find the information they need right away. I know I'm not the only person who's been unhappy with customer support. In fact, I read a statistic the other day that said 71% of customers think that customer support has remained the same or gotten worse across all channels. That's not really fun to hear, but so what so we're going to talk about like what are teams trying to improve what are they doing to make it easier for their customers to get what they need and for the agents to give customers what they need and if you're like more most organizations you've probably been looking into some kind of automation tool and that's where forethought comes in we're an ai platform that takes customers through the entire support process even helping prevent tickets from becoming queries from becoming tickets in the first place so let's like take a step back before we talk about artificial intelligence, like like the big topic is AI of the future, right? When people hear artificial intelligence or AI, they have no idea to what to expect. So what is AI after all? Great question, Ruth. It's definitely not uh, what you see in the movies is what I will say to you. It's not any sort of sentient being like Skynet or Ultron that's going to take over the world just yet. Artificial intelligence effectively refers to the simulation of human intelligence um, and decision making that we do internally in machines and programs. So AI systems or any systems effectively that can, within the constraints of their current deployments, make autonomous decisions and emulate the behavior of the human mind. This means that AI systems should require very little human maintenance, human intervention, and no, no sort of iterative manual programming, because you can imagine that's not very artificial intelligence of itself. And it makes artificial intelligence um, powerful enough to make real-time decisions across various use cases and scenarios to evaluate you know, what the best and most efficient way is to get to a certain objective. So examples of this will be Siri, Alexa, autonomous vehicles, or thought. And an even simpler example might just be something that, for example, um, in the morning, brews you a pot of coffee at 9 a.m. every single day um, automatically. Now, taking into account the fact that on Fridays, you seem to not wake up at 9 a.m. and not be in, in your house, pick up on those indicating factors that says, hey, this person seems to not touch their pot of coffee at 9 a.m. in the morning. Let's not brew that pot of coffee, and they'll actually go ahead and make that recommendation to you or even automatically stop brewing it. And that's what artificial intelligence is all about. Okay, awesome. That sounds futuristic. How does like what we think of AI compare to what we see marketed as AI today? I would say what we see as marketed as AI, artificial intelligence today is definitively not what I just described. Most artificial intelligence out there actually is artificial artificial intelligence in a way. They're not autonomous systems that are making any sort of decisions based on historical data or live context, even though these infrastructures and advancements have actually been made in the environment of artificial intelligence today. 
Instead, most of these AI infrastructure systems and even chatbots are really rule-based, decision tree-based uh, systems. Effectively, there are, as you can imagine, if-then statements that are hard-coded that are that have triggers that you know activate certain behaviors or actions only if a certain aspect is seen in the inquiry. So an uh, easy example of this is if somebody messages into a chatbot experience, for example, saying, hey, I'd like a refund. Maybe that refund keyword there is an indicating factor that we need to automatically every single time surface up the refund policy or automatically launch that customer or consumer into the refund workflow. However, that is really limiting, you can imagine, because there's so many different ways that people can position that question or phrase that question. What happens the next time somebody comes back and says, hey, I need compensation or money back? Um, in those environments, unless, unless you've mapped out those dictionaries and those keyword banks to include those phrases, you might not pick up on that intent being the exact same. And on the flip side of it, what happens if somebody comes back and says, hey, I wanted a refund, I got a refund, and now I want to restart my business with you. Um, again, the intent is entirely different, but if you're basing your actions um, and your CS organization off of specific hard-coded triggers or keywords, you're not going to pick up on the fact that intent is actually entirely different. So that's exactly what today's uh, recommendation engines really honestly do. Generally speaking, they don't run simulations. They don't have machine learning. They're not really a... So... You're saying keyword matching and if then statements are not true AI. What is true AI? Like what goes into that? First and foremost, like I mentioned, true AI, real AI doesn't rely on any sort of hard coded mechanism. Like I kind of identified this as commonly and pretty much inefficiently utilized today as the definition of artificial intelligence, but real AI doesn't require those kind of hard coded elements. It really truly emulates human behavior and takes into account a whole host of factors as it moves towards an objective. So. Um, to this end, there's actually been an, an insane amount of advancement made in the spaces of artificial intelligence, um, especially in the realm of natural language processing, natural language understanding, machine learning, um, and deep learning. Yep, exactly. So you'll notice here that we've pulled up a couple of definitions in terms of what NLP, NLU, and ML are. Um, and honestly, the advancements made here by the world's leading researchers um, in artificial intelligence, for example, Mila, who's a forethought partner and even leading experts at top tier industry firms such as Google and Facebook, it's enabled us to develop models that take into account the entirety of the situation rather than specific keywords in the world of customer support, the entirety of the, in the, entirety of the issue being presented at hand. So by taking into account the entirety of the scenario, historical data and historical training, and even trillions of data points across industries, search engines, et cetera, we now have the ability to facilitate the new wave of artificial intelligence that's much more aligned to hyper-specific or general models and can go way beyond um, what you see in hard-coded automation frameworks. Okay. So given your description of real AI, would you say today, like chatbots that we commonly use these days, are those AI? Well, uh, I would say no, not at all. Most chatbots are honestly rules-based chatbots today. The onus to create workflows and implement any sort of rules-based identification or rules-based resolution of the issue is actually mostly entirely up to um, or dependent on your resources that you have available. So mm -hmm. I would say they're not AI-based chatbots because like I mentioned, there's very mach le uh, little machine learning involved. There's no detection of the intent of the customer. There's no analysis as to where there might be gaps. And honestly, at this point in time, it's just those chatbots and those experiences that are hard-coded CS experiences they just don't meet customers' needs anymore, um, both from the perspective of the company who is trying to maybe grow, scale, avoid crisis, and from the perspective of the customer who wants to ask what they want, how they want, when they want, whatever about whatever they want, right? So moving away from these hard-coded experiences, like you see on the right-hand side, where it's very fake AI or faux AI on these hard-coded decision trees into much more real AI is almost critical in today's day and age. That's awesome. Got it. Um, so... If we're taking a deeper look at AI, specifically in the world of customer support, Lindsay, mm -hmm. what would you say is the driving need for AI tools today? Like what is AI of the future to forethought and how are we presenting that to our customers? Yeah, overall driving the need for AI is kind of what Zia just talked about. Five, 10 years ago, think about it. We, we weren't really utilizing these digital assistants, the Alexas, the Series, the Hey Googles. Sorry, everyone, if I'm on speaker and they're now going off. They're part of our daily lives now, really. Like every day we're interacting with them for the most part. We have a question. We want an immediate answer. If we've ordered a product, we want to know when is it going to arrive? If we have a problem, we want that problem solved really fast. And we've been trained as consumers to really expect more, right? And that is what AI allows customer, customer support orgs to do, um, to deliver to those customers' expectations, giving them access to content fast. 
that will help them self-serve, solve their issues in real time, um, or get them to a human agent faster. If you know that human intervention is needed to complete that customer's, customer's request, you want to get that customer to that agent as soon as possible. And that's how Forethought thinks of AI of the future. It's very human-centered, it's intent-rooted, and it's conversational AI, as Leah just mentioned. That's awesome. Yeah. So it sounds like companies really do need AI within their CS orgs. What would you say is the current like customer end user perception of what AI right now is? Like people trust it as in its current state? You know, I wish I could say yes, like 100%. Everyone trusts AI. It depends on who you're talking to. How long have they been in the chatbot game? They're old like me. They've seen it go through a lot of different iterations and it's very different today than it even was just four years ago. Zia just mentioned, right, what's given it a bad rap are these chatbots that are built with, I mean, really complex and hidden oftentimes, these decision trees, these if-then flows that result in an output. And a lot of times that output's not the correct one, right? It creates this friction. Customers have to repeat their question, rephrase their question. Um, it, it's not the best customer experience, right? So it's hard to manage. It doesn't deliver the best, most impactful results. And it's not true conversational AI that really gets to the intent of the user's ask and query and ensures that the AI's response is accurate and correct. I think we're, we're making strides. These chat fails on the screen. These are cringeworthy, right? The death loop is the absolute worst. And that is by like far from what Forethought's experience is for our customers. It's getting better, but still still has a bad perception for some yeah and people just don't trust customer support like we all you have to do is easy twitter search and you can see people complaining about customer support in general we actually pulled those chatbot failed examples from twitter along with these two eights people just talking about how customer support isn't meeting their needs and they can't find what they need and oh, yeah Things well, social media right here yeah. and they can blast it really easily oh, yeah. to, uh, you know, the, the social <laughs> recommendations. That's uh, that's something a lot of our consumers, especially around Omnichannel, are, are really taking note of. And again, that customer experience is like the center of the focus right now. Yeah, I actually also read a stat the other day. It said 30 percent of customers believe that chatbots and virtual assistants, only 30 percent make it easier or believe that it makes it easier for them to get customer support. So that means 70 percent wow. of people think chatbots don't actually make it easier for them. People are complaining, like, I don't want to talk to a chatbot. Let me just talk to a person and that kind of thing. But either it's way, not AI. It's not it's, real AI. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> you keep bringing up this phrase, digital or AI transformation. What is a digital transformation? Yeah. So I'll start by saying AI transformation for CX, digital transformation, there is not a one size fits all, right? It's going to look really different depending on a lot of factors, industry size, B2B, B2C, you omni-channel, multi-channel, the list goes on and on. It's, but overall, it's the use of utilizing AI to optimize and modernize the support function so that the human agents can focus their time and attention on the more complex issues that are going to result in higher satisfaction and customer retention overall. So it's, it's an often a, a window to a greater CX digital transformation. And that's when organizations are looking to really drive operational efficiencies throughout the entire customer life cycle by using these digital technologies to create new or change up and modify their existing business processes and customer experiences to meet changing business um, and market requirements. So, you know, typically this enablement comes from, I think Zia, you mentioned, it's either they're experiencing growth or crisis as a business overall. And so that AI transformation for customer support team really begins and ends with how you think about and engage with your customers. It's your driving factor. It's the North Star, I like to, to tell my customers. And it's enabling your support, to, enabling your support team um, is just really a, a natural step to include AI in your digital transformation journey. Yeah, no, that's great. Do you, can you think of any, do you have any examples or anything maybe of customers going through this right now or that you've kind of been talking to or how, what does that look oh, like? Oh gosh. Yeah. I could, so <laughs> many customers are going, all of our customers are going through this. That's why they've partnered with Forethought to go through these AI transformations. But mm -hmm. um, customer that comes to mind that really dove head first in with their AI transformation is a company called Spoonflower. Uh, they're a B2C customer of ours that has really epitomized how transformative AI transformation can be for customers and not even just customers, but also their support agents. They are a very creative, innovative, customer-centric organization uh, that 
truly does put the, cent the customer at the center of everything they do as a business. So prior to implementing REI solutions, they had put in quite a bit of effort and time into getting a fairly robust knowledge base put together that held a lot of great self-service information for customers, but they didn't really have a way to like effectively get it get that information in front of their customers easily. So since the launch of our platform, we've been able to do some really impactful things to their business and to their customer experience and their agent experience. And so we've reduced ticket volume by deflecting and resolving over 50% of their incoming customer queries in our chatbot, which has allowed for a more pleasant and less stressful busy season for their customer advocate team, their support team. So ultimately, you know, we're satisfying customers and satisfying agents. And that's really what we want our customers and our organizations to strive for when they enable AI. That's one that sticks out, but we have, we have lots of great customers that are going through this journey and partnered with us to do it. So, yeah, no, that's cool. So like at the end of the day, we're providing a solution that improves overall CX. We're improving customer experience. We're using AI to improve CX. So what insights do you have for what AI can do overall besides like, I mean, you just gave us that great example. How is this part of the digital transformation that we're seeing in CX? Like how are companies using our, the tools that we're giving them to have impact on everything? Yeah, in, in various different ways. It all starts and ends with the customer experience in mind, but all of our customers have different outcomes they're looking and objectives they're looking to meet with our AI. So a few that are kind of top to mind, um, AI is helping our customers by utilizing what I say, like all the tools in their CX toolbox. For many customers, they have disparate systems, knowledge sources, articles, communities that are built for one particular function or another. And AI is really helping bring that all together and get that information in front of customers and in front of agents to help them go and resolve issues faster. So it's reducing that overall volume of tickets that are getting into agents queues, getting mundane educational one-touch types of tickets that let's be real agents really don't like to spend their time on and getting those out of the queue and and helping there is providing customer and product insights this is one area i love i love voice of the customer i think it's so important to know what your customers are, are asking from you uh, so it's providing a lot of valuable information that can be used to make informed data-driven business decisions and lastly it allows for better reporting right? D data is king these days in all organizations. We collect it in a more accurate and faster way using AI. So a lot of our customers are seeing a lot of benefits there. Yeah. I think I also read a stat that said 81% of companies say that they compete solely based on their customer experience. If you're not doing yeah. something for your customers and your competitor probably is. So how can you make things easier on your customers and that kind of Absolutely. thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's all meant to serve the customer. It's wild, but yeah, 80%. That's, I believe it. I absolutely believe it. I, be, I believe it too. How many times have you made a decision on what flight you're going to take or what carrier you're going to have based off of just the support that you're getting, right? So I yeah. totally believe it. Yeah, no, I do that all the time. <laughs> I'm hoping you can touch up on this. So if the digital transformation and AI is meant to serve the customer, mm -hmm. what is the actual impact on, how does AI impact customers and support teams aside from you know, sure. Yeah. And then help customers better. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, let's talk about how artificial intelligence can actually impact the end user. So mm -hmm. there's a couple of different ways. Um, first and foremost, if you have an artificial driven, artificial intelligence driven chatbot in place, we'll be able to pick up on the intent of what a customer wants, regardless of how they come and phrase their question. So regardless of the language, the slang, the variations in terminology that they might use to present their inquiry, every customer effectively wants to get an answer um, quickly, accurately, um, in, in a manner that is, you know, resolve their issue. And so artificial intelligence lets us pick up on those intents and enables us to not be stuck in those keyword matching, you know, automated, hard coded, you know, environment. So from the customer's uh, experience, they can expect accurate, intelligent, quick responses um, to the more simpler questions via artificial intelligence. Now, on the flip side, there are also going to be much more complex issues um, that maybe artificial intelligence can't handle. And I think that there's also a end user experience that's going to be improved in that realm as well. If you have the right artificial intelligence in place, it should be able to, one, identify what the issue is that the customer is asking about in terms of its categorization. And two, be able to escalate that or prioritize that issue depending on sentiment and a number of other factors as to what the context of the inquiry is. So rather than having any sort of hard coded, hey, tickets arrive, they go and they go get go and get handled first and first out, or they're based on any sort of rules based queuing system, um, 
actually that's exactly what our triage tool does is it has that auto categorization, the auto analysis on the sentiment, the escalation prioritization. So it really enables um, tickets that aren't being handled on the front end by our artificial intelligence to be handled in a quick, more quick manner because they've been routed to the right department and escalated with the right amount of criticality. So from the customer's perspective, they're either going to get the answer immediately or they're going to get the answer faster than they previously got the answer. That's, that's really cool. I want my support to go super fast and as smooth as that, right? <laughs> what about agents, Lindsay? How does AI trans how does an AI transformation affect the frontline support team? Yeah, there's a huge impact on the frontline support team. What agent support agent wouldn't want a lighter load, an easier queue to manage, the right tickets in the right place at the right time, and just overall like have a less stressful job where they're not having to answer really again, repetitive, mundane tickets over and over and over again. Instead, they, they want to spend time that was previously wasted on those tickets on the more complex tickets and issues that come in. AI is just allowing support teams to be more efficient uh, and proficient in how they support their customers. And it's creating really cool and interesting career opportunities as well within CX. That's really exciting. You're seeing more and more roles centered around AI and automations and things like that. So it's definitely catching on. I think it also gives agents an opportunity to feel like they can grow in their roles. If you have the tools you need to be empowered to continue serving customers, and if you like it, then here's a pathway for you, and we can help we can enable that. That's awesome. And, so we talked about... Oh, go real ahead, quick, go ahead. not to harp on, on Forthought's specific product portfolio, but I am a sales engineer, but just wanted to call out another piece of uh, art, how artificial intelligence can help agents specifically is by being the intelligent aggregator and distributor of all of your different disparate knowledge sources. So I know, you know, in, in environments in CX today, it's very, very normal to have your data living in different locations. Maybe you have your internal documentation living, you know, that's technical facing in JIRA or Confluence and your external facing documentation on other data stores like a Zendesk Skype or a Google Docs, maybe a Salesforce knowledge. How are you beginning to aggregate that information, making it easier for your, your customer or your agents internally to search and get that information um, surface to them when it matters or pre even preemptively load that information as that intelligent aggregator. So that's kind of what our assist tool does, for example, is uses AI, the understanding of the issue that's being presented at hand to be that intelligent distributor of that content. That's, yeah, that's awesome. So if we're talking about AI adoption, we've talked about how the impact that it can have on CX across your organization. How do, like we're talking about data now, how do teams set themselves up for success with AI? Like, we need all this data. We need all, what else? What advice do we have for teams that are trying to prepare their organizations for an AI transformation? Great, great question, Ruth. Well, first and foremost, I would say be open minded. Artificial intelligence is definitively not here to solve every very critical use case you have or kind of replace the white glove customer service you're trying to facilitate with your top tier customers. Um, it's really here to handle the low hanging fruit, the repetitive questions, um, auto tagging, things like that. So you can actually repurpose your attention and your resources to growth or to more complex issues. So don't be afraid of this idea of like kind of this robotic customer service experience uh, coming in and handling those experiences for your customers. We really truly train on your historical data. Artificial intelligence systems should do that. And taking a look at how your expert agents have previously handled issues and how things have been previously categorized will help train the model so that it can emulate that behavior in a way that makes sense. So that's the first thing I would say. Um, secondly, we've talked about data a lot. So I would say keep your historical data. Um, historical data is literally equivalent to gold. You can imagine all the insights that you're getting and the ones that Lindsay mentioned as well in terms of reporting and understanding maybe what your customers are asking about, why they're churning. I'm sure all the everyone does customer analysis using that data. And that's exactly what AI models can leverage as well as is that data to be able to train and, and become as accurate as possible. And the last thing I'll mention, Ruth, um, is don't overcomplicate your hard coded systems. So whether or not anybody on this call decides to go forward with an artificial intelligence model or not, I would say avoiding any sort of complicated hard coded systems is almost a, you know critical to your environment. It'll be really difficult to continue scaling and growing if you continue to build those complex meshes of rules. It really honestly takes one CX leader or one critical agent to leave and then the keys to that automation kingdom are just gone out the window. Who knows how to un un unwind all of that, right? Look to set up simple articles, simple FAQs, simple queuing systems, simple tagging sim systems simple tools to augment your agent's experiences, and then let artificial intelligence potentially even be the analysis tool that you use to tell you where you invest, in, invest your resources going forward, um, depending on true customer need. Wow. Yeah. That's, I feel like there's a lot that goes into what you need to prepare your organization. We've 
you've touched on you've touched on data and all of that. Lindsay, can you think of anything else that a team would need to prepare themselves? Yeah, Zia really touched on the main things. Data is king. When it comes to AI, the more we have, the better our AI will understand and that voice your customers. So yeah, no, that, that pretty much summed it up. We look for that good backlog of support tickets. So, you know, keep those historical support tickets. They are so important. Any existing kind of ticket taxonomy, tagging structures, great. Um, macro, template, quick reply type of usage by the agents is really nice as well. It helps with automating some of that um, on like the email side uh, and with assist, our assist product. But really, we just need a couple of internal resources to really help drive some of this change management internally. My team tends to work with a support manager or project manager, help desk admins, always great, and maybe some limited engineering time to help us get our solutions on web pages, mobile sites, things like that. But uh, really, that's what we look for when we say AI ready. Okay, so if data is king, Zia, what do you say to people who don't feel like they have all the data that they need? How can support teams assess if they're ready to evaluate AI tools if they are weary on the data side? Data is definitely important, but if it doesn't exist or if you aren't feeling comfortable with it, let us potentially take a look at your environment anyways and build out some sample data sets together. And then effectively, more important, let's have that data collection actually commence and get started so we can build out data sets for future AI deployments. Um, and as to whether or not you feel like your support team is ready to assess tools, I think Lindsay touched on it earlier. You're either in crisis, preparing for crisis, in growth or preparing for growth. And in any four of those stages, I feel like artificial intelligence um, is something that could be impactful to your organization. And I can dive a little bit deeper there. For example, if you are in crisis or you're preparing for crisis, you might think to yourself, you don't have time to deploy an artificial intelligence tool. Um, when in reality, artificial intelligence can actually help you get out of those difficult uh, situations. So you can identify top priority issues so that even if you are in a crisis scenario, the most critical issues are still being handled in a way that makes, makes sense and in a timely manner. You can also give your agents that you might be hiring as reinforcements shorter ramp times because all of a sudden you're able to surface up the content that makes the most sense for them and have that assistance from the artificial intelligence. And of course, of resolving repetitive issues so that you can focus on the more complex issues during that critical scenario or that crisis is really important. But that's that side of the scenario. On the flip side of it, whether you're in growth or preparing for growth, um, let artificial intelligence actually inform your expansion and growth plans. If you are looking to maybe redo your knowledge base, how do you know which articles make the most sense to touch up? Or how do you know what you should do in terms of uh, up-leveling your CS organization as a whole? Let artificial intelligence be the analysis tool that you use and the informing, informing tool to tell you about how you should go about that expansion plan. And even on the hiring side, maybe um, enable you to hire agents who are more experts, uh, who are, have more expertise in certain elements or specific elements rather than general agents um, because you have an AI tool in place that could handle that low hanging fruit. Okay. So once a team evaluates and they make a decision, are they ready to implement or let's talk about that for a second. Lindsay or Zia, what does real AI implementation look like? Yeah, I can touch on this a little bit. Uh, as I mentioned, with AI transformation not being a one-size-fits-all, Forethought's AI implementation at Forethought is also not a one-size-fits-all, but overall, it's a pretty streamlined process when you're talking about real AI implementation. Since we are building our AI off of your historical data, your tickets that have been worked by your human agents, solved and tagged, our AI is much easier to configure, maintain, and optimize over time. So Zia and his team do an awesome job at setting expectations with customers in the evaluation process to really ensure we have full transparency and alignment on really the timeline uh, we have for implementation. Ed, do you want, I can go over this as well yeah, a little you bit. Want to so go over this, I, I pulled up an implementation overview. Yeah. Um, Lindsay, do you want to go through the steps of that? What does this look like? For absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a standard implementation timeline. Again, it's going to look uh, very different depending on the customer, their desired outcomes of using AI and really what their priorities are. But yeah, start off with a kickoff call, right? We're going to align on success metrics, the implementation timeline, expectations, outcomes, responsibilities of each team members. Um, you know, we'll connect with your help desk, ingest your data, and set up that cadence of, of sync, whether it be weekly, bi-weekly, to really manage the implementation and progress implementation forward. Next, we go into the fun stuff, right? The solution uh, implementation piece. And this is where we'll work to 
and this is all on us, right? We're working, we'll train your models, we'll configure the chat bot, we'll provide you with a testing environment to test the solution before we deploy it into production. We'll help train your team and walk through how our analytics will be provided and how we'll, we'll kind of evaluate that as we go. It leads into that analytics and reporting dashboard. We're super transparent with how our AI is performing and our customers get access to that analytics dashboard and additional metrics as needed to really help track progress for those objectives and outcomes. And then uh, this kind of fourth phase is my personal favorite. This is kind of the continuous improvements. If I have customers on the call, they'll know I, I talk in phases or in uh, versions. So we'll be in like a version two, phase two at this point, but we're not a like set it and forget it type of organization where you put the AI, li AI live and then that's just what it does. We're continuously working with our customers to look at other ways to improve our performance, to look at other use cases of where we could apply AI. And so we're always going to look to improve and, and optimize. And then that kind of fifth state, fifth phase is really just a look at ROI, right? Show you that you've gotten value out of your investment. And again, that's all backed by data and metrics that we would provide. That's awesome. Thank you so much for going over that. I think we skipped over this, but what does the lift look like? for our customers who are trying to implement. Zia, do you want to take that? Yeah, yeah, I can take that. It's a great question because effectively, even if you are thinking to yourself, okay, that might, it definitely seems like I need this. Do I even have the resources in place to be able to handle this? And truly the lift required on your side or customer side is pretty minimal. What I will say is that specifically here at Forthought, at least, we like to take a lot of that load on ourselves and actually have built out systems that will enable easy implementation. Um, and so what that looks like is effectively, we need an understanding of three elements. First of all, how do customers contact you today? Second of all, what do the customers typically contact you about? And third, how do agents typically resolve those issues? Now, that's a very high level understanding of what we would need, but if we can get an understanding of those three elements, we can you know, take it from there effectively. On your side, what we do need is, of course, like Lindsay mentioned, a help desk admin, somebody who can actually walk us through the system that you have in place, maybe a content creator. The reason for that content creator is actually a benefit to you. If we come back to your team and say, hey, you should create an article around COVID-19 policies that's updated because a lot of people keep asking about that and it's a repetitive inquiry. Uh, we might come back to your team and say, hey, content creator, please create this article. You'll get an additional 5% self-service or 5% ticket deflection if you can create this article. So that's an additional resource that you might want to have is somebody who creates content. And then of course, uh, we need data sets. So if the data set doesn't exist today, that's fine. Let's work together to create that data set. We would need your team to identify how you would potentially categorize something, how you might respond to something. And if we have that data set built out together, then we can leverage that as well. So again, the uplift on your side is help desk admin, content creator, data set creator, if possible. From that perspective, it's pretty minimal requirements on your side. Yeah. I feel like, Lindsay, do you have anything you want to add? No, I was it nailed it. Yeah, it, it doesn't take a lot. And I think that is part of that kind of misconception of like what the lift is needed. It's it's just really, you know, we can, I mean, we've implemented with one and two points of contact at customers. You don't have to have a 10 person team to implement AI. It's really just two, three key resources, the data that, that Zia mentioned, and we can go, we can get started. And I think that's the key is just starting. Right. I feel like this can just sound kind of scary to customers, right? So, but like if it's pretty cut and dry and like straight to it, what do you say to prospects or people who they understand that they need something, but they're afraid to take the dive? Oh yeah, I mean, I so get this. It does sound scary to some people. I, you know, digitally transforming your business, that's a lot. <laughs> Change management is tricky. It can be intimidating. It is uncomfortable. I don't care who you talk to. Change management is uncomfortable. But it doesn't really have to be that painful if you pick the right partner. And I think that's that's where forethought is. We're your partner in doing this with you. We're not going to give it to you and say, you got to go figure it out. Uh, so I just I really encourage folks who are seeking out this AI transformation and, and really looking for a partner just to keep that end result, that CX transformation as a whole in mind, it's so worth it. And it doesn't take a lot to show results. So again, it's just starting with what you have and we'll work with you to fill in the gaps that are needed to apply AI in other ways that you may not think are possible today. Yeah, that's awesome. Zia, do you have anything you want to add there? No, I think Lindsay nailed it. Okay, awesome. I feel like we've, we've talked about this pretty in um, detail. I don't know if you guys have any closing thoughts or anything on this. Customers want more. They expect more from us. So why aren't we doing these things to yeah. help them get what they need and that kind of thing? It's crazy, Ruth. We're seeing explosive growth and reconnection into CS experiences post-COVID. People are reanalyzing 
what their support organization needs to look like as they look to regain um, their composure in their businesses and in fact, continue to expand and grow even beyond what they were pre-COVID. People want to be able to reach out in any channel. Um, they want to be able to reach out about anything and they want to have those answers quickly um, and accurately. And if not, they want to get to an agent as soon as possible. I mean, how many times have you picked up the phone and you know hit zero until you get to an agent, right? I know I do that for sure. And that's a similar experience that people want to have when they in interact with chatbots or agents, these types of channels. And honestly, current chatbot deployments out there current triaging or queuing based system, you know, rules that rules that are out there, they're just not taking into account the fact that customers are going to be phrasing things different ways or asking questions that are coming from different channels. And that's what Ford thought's aiming to do is to be able to bridge that gap between content and consumer, be the bridge between intent and outcome. And from that perspective, I think that we really do have a robust tool set and portfolio here to be able to facilitate that for our customers. Yeah, that's awesome. If anyone viewing has questions, how can they reach either of you guys? Of course you have, I'm sure Ruth will send out our emails and in, in, in our recording or anything like that, but yeah, you can reach out to us from that perspective. Um, any questions that you have in terms of how far can facilitate that digital transformation that Lindsay and I talked about today, uh, feel, feel free to reach out to anybody at sales at forethought.ai, Zia at forethought.ai, uh, whatever you might need to do. Yeah. Exactly. We're, we're pretty easy to find. Find us on LinkedIn. Love to talk to anyone who's really thinking about making the step. My kind of like closing thoughts are make the investment. Uh, your customers want it. Your agents need it. Your organization, I promise, will benefit from it. I don't know. The great words of like Nike, just do it. You know, let's, let's do it. I'm, I'm ready for, for more awesome forethought customers. So I bet bring Nike it on. Kind of AI that they use. So let's be in like, like let's be like Nike, right? <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for talking with me. Um, this has been great. I really appreciate you taking this the time. Fun. And thank you for everyone watching. I hope you've learned something new. If you have any questions, feel free to please reach out. Contact. Yeah, reach out on LinkedIn. Go to forethought.ai if you want to learn more about what we're doing and how we can help transform your CS organization. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Well, thanks, Bye. Sure.